Welcome to today's lesson on estimating angles. Today we're going to discuss how you can estimate the degrees of an angle even if you don't have a protractor with you. Let's go ahead and begin. We are going to begin today's lesson using 90 degree angles or right angles. And as you can see, we have a right angle in the middle of our screen. Now, we want to start with a right angle because when we're estimating about angles, we want to compare the angles that we're estimating to right angles. And we compare to right angles because right angles will always have a measure of 90 degrees. So if you can identify a right angle, you can identify if an angle is larger or smaller than 90 degrees. Now, one of the ways that we can tell if it's an angle is a right angle is if there's a square in the corner of the angle. And that square means right angle or 90 degrees. Anytime you have an angle that is greater than 90 degrees, we call that an obtuse angle. So an obtuse angle is an angle that is greater than 90 degrees. So let's review for a moment. An angle that has a degree less than 90 will be acute. Any angle that has a degree that's exactly 90 degrees is a right angle. And any angle that is greater than 90 degrees will be obtuse. One strategy that you can use while estimating angles is to actually draw a right angle on the angle that you're estimating. So let's start with this acute angle right here. Now I'm going to draw a 90 degree angle on this acute angle. And I know a 90 degree angle looks like the corner of a square. Now this angle that I just drew, this 90 degrees, is clearly larger than the smaller angle that we're comparing it to, which means this angle that we're estimating must be acute. Now our middle angle is already done for us because we have a square in the corner, which means that it's a right angle. So let's go ahead and move over to our obtuse angle. So we're going to draw a 90 degree angle and put our square in the corner. And as you can see, our 90 degree angle does not completely span the distance that this obtuse angle does. So this larger angle is clearly bigger than 90 degrees, which means it's obtuse. Let's go ahead and practice estimating these angles by drawing a right angle on them and seeing how they compare. Let's go ahead and start with our first angle right here. If we are to draw the corner of a square, a perfect 90 degree angle, we can clearly see that the angle we're comparing it to is larger than the 90 degree angle. Look at all that space we have that the angle goes beyond 90 degrees. So that means that this angle is greater than 90 degrees, which makes it an obtuse angle. Let's go ahead and let's check our next angle. Again, we are going to draw a 90 degree angle against this angle right here. And as we can see, this angle doesn't quite make it all the way to 90 degrees. It's much smaller. So that means that it's an acute angle. All right, let's try one more. This angle already has a square in the corner, which means it's already a 90 degree angle, also known as a right angle. We see angles around us every single day. And one of the ways we see angles is on signs. So I have three signs on the screen. One sign is made of 60 degree angles, one sign is made of 90 degree angles, and one sign is made of 135 degree angles. I want you to tell me, using our strategies, which sign is made of which angles. Let's go ahead and start with our first sign right here. We know that we want to compare the angle to a 90 degree angle. So we have our angle right here in the corner, and I'm going to draw a 90 degree angle on this angle so that we can see how it compares. Now, as you can see, this angle looks smaller. This corner of the sign looks smaller than 90 degrees. So that means it must be acute. And if this is an acute angle and has to be less than 90 degrees, that means it must be 60 degrees. So this sign is made out of 60 degree angles. Let's go ahead and move to the stop sign. We're going to compare the stop sign's corner angles to 90 degrees. So I'm going to draw a right angle or a 90 degree angle, and we're going to see if the stop sign's angle is larger, smaller, or equal to. Well, if we look at the angle of the stop sign, which I'm outlining in green, 
we can see that it goes past 90 degrees. So that means that it's greater than 90 degrees, so it means it's 135 degrees. So a stop sign is made out of 135 degree angles. All right, let's look over our last problem. We have a sign here, and we are going to put a right angle on the corner to see how it fits. Now, as you can see, a right angle seems to fit pretty well. And that's because this sign is made out of 90 degree angles. So we have four 90 degree angles. And that's how you can use 90 degree angles to estimate the size of an angle you're measuring. Let's go ahead and review what you've learned in today's lesson. When you're estimating angles, it's important to compare it to a right angle to start because we know that a right angle will always be 90 degrees. And you can tell if an angle is a right angle because it will have a square in the corner. Now, if an angle looks smaller than 90 degrees or less than 90 degrees, then we know it's going to be an acute angle. If an angle looks larger than 90 degrees, then we know it's going to be an obtuse angle. And the best way to decide is to compare it to that right angle, which will always be constant or 90 degrees.